Are pet fish easy to keep? Well, I think so. In fact, I think they might be the easiest of all pets to keep. And to show you why I've broken pet keeping down into some categories, we can analyze different pets and to see how fish stack up. The categories are number one, time. How much time does the pet require for bonding, socialization, interaction? Number two, veterinary care. How much time and money are you gonna need to spend at the vet to have this pet? Number three, space requirements. How much space does this animal need? Number four, property damage. How likely is this animal to cause property damage that's gonna cause you expense and headache? Number five, the mess. How much mess does this pet make that you're gonna have to clean up? Number six is smell. Does this pet smell bad? Is it gonna fill your house with unpleasant odors? And number seven is the cost. How much does it cost to keep different kinds of animals? And how do fish stack up against that? Now, over my lifetime, I've kept all kinds of animals. Dogs, cats, bunnies, birds, reptiles, barnyard animals. I love them all. And I think all of them add something to the pet owner's life. I think they're all valuable. However, some pets put more demands on their owners than others. So let's dig in and see how fish stack up. So number one, bonding time, socialization, interaction, just time with the pet. Fish don't require any social time from their owners. Now this doesn't mean that a fish won't interact with their owner, they will. And it doesn't mean that the owner won't bond with the fish, we totally do, we love our fish. But what it does mean is that the fish is not gonna experience psychological damage if the owner doesn't spend a lot of time with it. Other animals like dogs and parrots will actually experience psychological damage if they don't get enough time with their owner. Parrots are the most demanding. Parrots literally bond with their owner in the same way they would bond with their mate in the wild. And parrots in the wild are constantly with each other. They're never out of sound range. They can always call and hear their, their partners call back to them. So they get very distressed when they call out and their owner doesn't respond or they don't see their owner and they're not with their owner. Because of this, oftentimes when parrots experience neglect, they'll pluck their feathers, they'll, they'll tear their feathers out of their body, they'll have all kinds of bad behavioral problems because they've experienced psychological damage. Dogs need our time as well. Most pets need time with us. Fish don't. So fish are great for someone who wants an easy pet that doesn't take a lot of their time. Number two is veterinary care. Now I like my veterinarian, but I don't like getting my cat, putting it in the carrier, taking it to the vet and going through that whole procedure. That's stressful on me and it's really bad for the cat. Dogs and cats and many other animals require trips to the vet. If they're really old or really young, multiple trips to the vet. And don't forget the annual vaccines and visits. To help pay for college, I worked at animal hospitals. We saw lots of dogs and cats, but we also saw bunnies, birds, reptiles, other rodents. You know what we never saw? Fish. Even if you wanted to take your fish to the veterinarian, you probably can't, because the odds are that there's not an aquatic veterinarian in your neighborhood. There's very few fish vets in the United States. Now, this is not necessarily a good thing because sometimes you want veterinary care for the fish, but as things stand, most medications for fish are sold over the counter at pet stores. That's how we take care of our fish. There simply aren't aquatic vets around to do it. Now, if there is an aquatic vet in your area and you want to have your fish examined, then you don't have to take your fish to that vet. Most aquatic vets come to your home to treat the fish. They need to see the aquarium, they need to see the environment, how everything's set up to do their job properly. So you don't have to take the fish to the vet. The vet comes to you when it comes to aquariums, if you even have that option. So bottom line is, veterinary care, probably not something you're gonna pay for for fish. And if you are, they're gonna come to you, so it's not gonna be a hassle. Number three is space requirements. Dogs run, cats roam, birds fly, fish swim, but unless you have a very large, very active species of fish, you don't need a massive aquarium. You don't need a lot of space. The vast majority of fish we keep in our aquariums are small and require only modest size aquariums. Let's talk about property damage. In addition to not needing a lot of space, fish are also not likely to cause much property damage. I've seen dogs absolutely destroy furniture. I've seen cats pee in places where you're never gonna get the smell out. I've seen parrots remodel the woodwork in a house, just chew the molding to bits. 
rodents chew things as well. The only property damage I can think of with fish is if your aquarium leaks and you get water damage. If you're trying to save money and you buy a really old beat up aquarium and you just set it on a dresser or something, you might have leaking problems. But if you get a properly made aquarium, put it on a proper aquarium stand, it's level, then your aquarium's probably not gonna leak. The odds of it leaking are there, but they're very, very slim. We can further mitigate the risk of water damage by keeping aquariums that are modest in size. A modest aquarium doesn't have that much water in it, so there's a limit to the amount of property damage that can happen if it would leak at some point. You can keep your aquarium in the basement or on the ground floor. That way if it did leak, it doesn't trickle down multiple floors. So there's ways to mitigate the damage that could occur, but simply by keeping aquariums that are well made and not used and beat up, and putting them on a proper stand that's leveled properly, you're gonna mitigate almost all of that risk. So I think that aquariums are a lot less prone to property damage than most other pets. Messiness. One thing I love about aquariums is they aren't messy. Birds poop and they scatter their bird seed in ways that seem to defy physics. You find that stuff everywhere. <laughs> cats require their poop to be scooped, and I love my cats, but cleaning the litter box is not among my favorite things to do. Not to mention when cats have hairballs and you get a little vomit in your laundry or your rug or on your pillow. Fish, however, keep all their mess inside the aquarium. There's no um, brushing out hair that got all over your clothes or your couch. There's no trying to sweep up bird seed. There's no cleaning the litter box and there's no vomit. Thank goodness. In a properly balanced aquarium, all that's necessary for maintenance is a water exchange. Every week or two, you get a, a siphon hose. You suck out some old water with some fish waste. You replace that with fresh water. You wipe down the aquarium so the algae's wiped down off your glass and you're pretty much good to go. So most days I get to enjoy watching my fish swim rather than cleaning up their mess. Let's talk about smell. A properly maintained aquarium does not smell. Now if you lift up the lid and stick your nose right down in the water, you might get a little pond scent. It might smell a little bit like algae, but it's not gonna be anything you should smell if you're not sticking your nose right down. You shouldn't notice it at all. Now. There's a lot of pets I love, but they smell. I love reptiles, but reptile feces has a smell you'll never forget. It's its own special kind of odor, and it's not pleasant. And rodents flat out stink, no matter what we do. It's, it's just in their nature. They're never gonna stop smelling. I love them, they're worth it, but they smell. And when cats take a dump, well, it is what it is, at least until the litter can dry out the feces. Now, don't get me wrong, I like all animals and I've kept lots of kinds of animals as pets. I'm not saying the odor isn't worth it, I'm just saying that fish are the least smelly pet I've ever kept. How about cost? I could go to my local big box pet store today and buy a 20 gallon aquarium starter kit for just under $100. For another 100 bucks, I could have the decorations, the food, and fish. So for, I don't know, under 200 bucks, I could be all set up. I could get a 10 gallon aquarium kit for half that price. So the initial cost of setup is there, but it's not super high compared to a lot of pets. And the great thing is the running costs. Once you have that set up and going, the day-to-day -day maintenance costs on fish are very low. You have a little bit of cost to run your light, that's gonna take some electricity. If you have a heater in your tank, it's gonna take some electricity to keep the tank the proper temperature for tropical fish, but you don't have to do that. There are a lot of fish species that are fine at room temperature. White cloud mountain minnows, paradise fish, lots of fish don't need to be kept warm. So you can avoid that heating cost altogether if you want. The other cost might be water. You're gonna to have to change the water occasionally to maintain your tank, as we talked about. So a few gallons of water costs a few pennies, but it's nothing very expensive. And the great thing about fish is their food. Fish don't eat a ton. The food cost per day to feed a tank of fish is very low compared to dogs, cats, birds, most other pets. So all in all, it doesn't take a lot of money to set up, and the running costs to maintain them long-term are very low. Fish don't need treats, they don't need toys, they don't need a bed to sleep in, they don't need a kennel, they don't need brushes, all those accoutrements that come with most pets. So they're quite inexpensive. So fish win in that area, as far as I'm concerned. 
So those are the main categories for pet care, and I think when we break it down, we'll see that fish score pretty well as far as being easy to keep and not too expensive. But there's other things to think about. Let's talk about escape. Dogs run away, cats run away, birds fly away. When reptiles escape, it's a big problem. Rodents can get out of the tiniest areas and run away. Your fish isn't going anywhere. Your fish is not running away. Escape is not a problem. So something else to consider is vacations. One great thing about fish is they make getting away from it all easy. If you want to escape for the weekend, you just go. You don't have to worry about it. With most pets, you're going to have to hire someone to come pet sit for you. Feed the animal, clean up after the animal, take it for a walk or what have you. Or you're going to have to pay to have it boarded at a boarding facility. Boarding facilities are pretty stressful on pets, so it's not a great option and it's expensive. With most fish, you don't have to worry about someone caring for them while you're gone. They will be just fine not being fed while you're gone for the weekend. That's because most fish come from tropical environments where they experience a wet season and a dry season. During the wet season, there's lots of water, lots of food. The fish eat really well and get nice and fat. But then during the dry season, that goes away. During the dry season, most fish don't get much food at all for long periods of time. So fish have adapted to not eating for long periods of time. Also, fish are cold-blooded. They don't have to have enough energy to heat their bodies. They don't fight gravity because they're swimming all the time, so they don't have to fight to stay upright. And they have small brains. There's not a lot of computing powder up there. Together, these three things mean that the fish don't need a ton of nutrition. So that, along with the fact that they've adapted to survive long periods of low food intake during the dry season means they're going to be just fine while you leave for the weekend or if you go on an occasional vacation for a week or so. Now that might seem cruel. We hate not eating. We're warm-blooded. We fight gravity. We have big brains. We have a lot of high energy requirements. If we skip some meals, we're miserable. Fish are different though. I know that that's, I know it seems cruel, but it's a lot safer for a fish to not eat for a little while than to have someone come over and feed the fish because that person might not know what they're doing. They might overfeed the fish and then you have a whole new set of problems. So usually if you're gonna get away, you just go. You don't worry about it and the fish are fine. So these are the reasons I think fish just might be the easiest pet to keep. And if you want a pet, but you want something that's not too expensive and isn't too demanding, I think you should consider fish. And if you decide that you want some, we've got a ton here at dancefish.com we could sell you if you're interested. Come on by, we've got you covered. And if you want to learn about fish, we do a weekly live stream every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time at the Dan's Fish YouTube channel. Come by, we can answer any questions you might have and help get you started. I appreciate you watching everyone. Thanks for being here. Until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.